So for the different churches in the Philippines, we have a prayer movement, and we call it Philippines God Loves Kosovo Prayer Movement. And in Philippines, there is a Christian Levise, Trish, many Vendors and Chitati to Domi Levise, Philippines, Zoti, and Kosovo. So before you gave this flag uh, to me, we already have been praying for Kosovo. So <laughs> We are praying for peace of God to reign in Kosovo. And then as we are having our time of prayer, we also had a collection of sacrificial offering. And whatever we have collected, we turn over to international Christian NGOs to, uh, who are working here in Kosovo. So in 1998, we were actually extending our love and care for Kosovo. So when Britain invited me to come for this Reformation Week celebration, I said I should be there. I want to see what God is doing in Kosovo. And yesterday, uh, from the airport, then we were driving to Pristina and I saw Christ Pristina down the valley and my heart leaped for joy. Because the, because the previous images I have in Kosovo are people who are fleeing and our uh, and the refugees who are lining up and uh, are having some difficulties. And to see the development of Kosovo is really a great encouragement. And more than that, when I was having uh, uh, time with Griton, he was talking about the religious development, religious freedom, and how as evangelicals, Protestants, you are a minority, but yet have a very good influence in the in the society. In fact, you are only one of the few countries here in Europe that are actually celebrating the 500 years of the Reformation. And you have actually a week of celebration. And we pray that what Luther and the other reformers started, you will continue on here in Kosovo. And so this afternoon I want to focus on the Reformation through the Word of God. That is taken from Isaiah chapter 55 verses 6 up to 13. 500 years ago there was this Reformation. It started in Wittenberg when 
Martin Luther posted his 95 theses in this church door in Wittenberg. And the basic teaching that he is saying is that it is sola fide, sola scriptura, as well as sola gratia. With a center on the cross, which is solus Christus. And so this afternoon I want to say that God invites us to have engagement in his with with his word that brings reformation. <laughs> Not that the prophet Isaiah started by saying in verse 1, Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money, without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for what does not, does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Anybody here hungry? Thirsty? Are we looking for something that satisfies us? Now, what is the most precious possession that a person could ever have? Some of us would like to have houses and lot. Or you may want to have a, a beautiful car. Or even some people would like to have a yacht or an airplane. But the word of God is saying that the most precious possession that man could ever have is free. And, and that is eternal life. Jesus even said, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world? but loses his own soul. Look at the person beside you. That person is one of the richest person in this world. Because we have something that the world does not have and the world cannot give. And that is what, the, what our Lord Jesus Christ is able to give. And Jesus Christ said, and this is eternal life that you know the only true God, Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And we want to experience the enrichment of what it means to enjoy that life, to enjoy that relationship with our God. And it is when we engage ourselves with the Word of God that we can really be enriched in our own personal lives. How can, then, how can we then have reformation through the Word of God? From verses 6 up to 13, we see at least four guidelines, prescriptions that were given how we can have reformation through the Word of God. First, in verse 6 to 7, we need to respond to God's gracious invitation. Maybe you can read verses 6 and 7. So here we are being invited to seek the Lord while He may be found. We are invited that we can have forgiveness of sins and the right to become a child of God. And that is absolutely free. Now it is free, it doesn't mean it is not, it is worthless. 
But it means it is something which is priceless, but we cannot afford it. That salvation is actually infinite because it costs the infinite blood of the Lord Jesus Christ who gave his life for us. Say to the person beside you, you are really a billionaire. Tu i persone dopo te e ti è un po' che non 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 è un po' che
edhe ajo ka ndodh të kej kërku edhe studiu fjallën e qëtën, është da vje për rëndis, fshedja e diçkaje, për është da vje mbretëve e tim i saj. So the inductive Bible study method of the Reformation is actually a factor for the scientific method. Edhe kështu që studimi inductive i Biblis e kështetar për mes reformacionit, është një pjesë kyqe e zhvillimit më të keshën të shkencës. Prior to this inductive method, they just have the deductive reasoning by logic. Në para, para kësaj, e studimi të inductiv Biblis, ata këshin pas tjeshtë një studim të inductiv që këshin për Biblis. But because they gave emphasis on the study and the observation, as well as the objective study of the Word of God, then it also gave them the objective study and reasoning. Po për ashtuje se të dhunë të bëjë studimi të inductiv dhe observimin të Biblis, ata të filloj edhe shikimi Biblis të mënyrë. In fact, scientific revolution took off because of the protestant literal study of nature. And the revolution is concerned in those that the shkak to study me to fight the Bible that says the Panako. During the time they said they have two books. Nat ko ata tanë se kishëm të libra. The first book is the Bible which is the book of the Word of God. And the Bible is for the Bible, it's the first Bible, if you have it for this. The second book is the book, the book of God's work which is nature and history. So both the, the book of the Word of God and the book of nature and history needs to be studied literally, inductively, as well as objectively. Shtë që këto të libra, libri i peprave të përëndis dhe i fjallë të përëndis du të studiohen në njërë induktive. In fact, when you go to the Cavendish Laboratory in Cambridge University, in the door it says there Psalm 111 verse 2. Edhe nëse shkojnë të Cavendish Laboratory, të cilë është të Cambridge, në derën e ati laboratorit, është pësoj, minis që në një mdhej të, që të mdoja mdhej pra të Zotit, kërkuara nga gjithë ata që kënë aqe me to. So I want to say here that the, one of the products of the Reformation is the desire to study the works of God. And that desire to study the works of God produced the modern science. And Now let's go to the third guideline that the prophet Isaiah is giving us. Verses 10 and 11, we need to reckon the effectiveness or efficacy of the word of God. Maybe you can read verse 10 and 11. Verse 10 and 11. Shtu dhe tjetë kjo e nga ime që të nga goja ime, a jo nuk dhe të 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 bësh pa kryre atë që të shiroj dhe pa realizua pjëtësisht atë për cilën e tërgova. So we see here how the word of God is effective. Shtu që ne e shohim këtu e vetën e fjallës të rëndis. As the rain waters and nourishes the plants. Ashtu që shushiju pjenë dhe dhe ju shen e bën toku fjellore. The word of God ensures the fullness and richness of eternal life e fjallja për rëndisë si kërën jetën e përjeshme. Kosovo is an agricultural land. Kosovo është një tokë që mirë të marrë. You produce a lot of vegetables, a lot of agricultural products in this land. Edhe ju keni prodime të ndryshme që vinë nga tokën në këtë temë. And so it's the rain that nurtures, that waters this, and it's like the word of God that waters and sustains our life. And as to see shiu që u ditë edhe për këto pjellore, kështu është kjalla e përëndit, së në u shene. In fact, the word of God describes a glorious future and also creates that future. E në fakt kjalla e përëndit se përshkru një një të ardhe të javdishme edhe e kryan atë të ardhe. Now, why is the word of God so effective? Apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16, because it is the breathed out by God, it came out from God, and therefore it is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God will be equipped for every good work. Pastaj fjallja përëndis të 2 Timoteo 3, 16, të të gjithë shkrimi është të primësuar ka përëndia dhe i do bëshën për mësën bindje dreqe dhe për e të kemë drejtësi që njëri ju përëndis të të përkryet të rësisht të pajistur për shdobej për të mirë. In fact, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 tells us that that is the secret of success. 
pastaj te gizuje v njih te na trgo in se aj oš se krih ti suksese. That if we will meditate on the word of God day and night. So then, da se ne do meditoj in vjale pred tis det dena. Then we will be careful to do everything that is written on it. A te ne do dil šut ti da se čez bojem, čez mače ste škruvali to. And because we do everything that is written in the word of God, then it gives us good success, great success. E prašči se ne bojem, čez škače ste škruvali vjale pred tis, a te siguriš se da odkorim sukses tma. Now let me tell you thirdly that the reformation developed economy. A te veš mi dejali, ki jo tregoš, ko ti mneš, se se reformacijon je žvila ekonomin. One, what is one of the secret of the economic progress of the western culture? Cili još nje prej sekrete v te žvilimi, te ekonometni potu, kar rendi more? Is this woman. Oš ti je grua. How many of you know this woman? So prejušeni nekaj grua. This is the wife of Martin Luther. This is Catherine Luther. Or not more, Catherine Van Bora Luther. Catherine Van Bora Luther. She was, you know, she developed farms, real estate, and economic enterprise. I actually like firma, družme, and actually like firma sin, ekonomike. In fact, because of her economic, we would say, activity, they became. You know, Luther, Martin Luther, and his wife Catherine became one of the wealthiest people in in Germany, having more real estate. And it took a, it took a bazuan attribute to Sonia Luther. I heard, spoke to me, but shortly so I found it was cheated with sponsors in Germany. It was because of the fact that they were too focused on part of the story. If they were in Russia, they would not be able to develop that land because they would not have the incentive to have that development. And this is the same in Russia. I don't know if it's going to be able to do it, but because of the fact that they were in Russia, they would not be able to do it. And they would not be able to do that because the caste system will hinder that kind of development. And this is the same in India. The caste system is not going to be able to do it. It's not going to be able to do it. Mrs. Catherine Luther was able to show that development brought about by reformation. If you want to read more, this was actually developed by Max Weber in his Protestant Ethic and Spirit of Capitalism. Where he said Luther Follow the teaching of the Bible. By touch the theory, he consumes the Bible. And they practice productivity of work. And a pastaya ta practicum productivity. And this actually created Europe's spirit of capitalism. And a pastaya kios do da increme a spirit capitalist Europas. In fact, let me add that the I have not here in my PowerPoint, but the Swiss watch manufacturers. Ed se nu kosh tum na 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 prezentem let me. As a result of the teaching of John Calvin in in Switzerland, the Swiss people says they want to have that spirit of excellence and precision, and actually and precision in terms of their service to God and to the people. And at that Swiss turn, it touched me to that kind, me to share with that kind of precision, to pull it on, to read so deep, to read me as well. So the Swiss watches, Rolex and all others are actually. A result of the thinking of the Reformation. And the Shorek, the Sistran, the Sterolex, the Apocita Vera, the Kent Schitten, the Alcrium, and Bons, Bons, the Reformation. The Protestant work ethic, as well as the spirit of capitalism, not the greed capitalism, but the capitalism that wants to produce wealth. As God says, God has given us the ability to create wealth. And the Kirsch, the Tika Protestant, the Kirsch Spirit Capitalism, with the Opert Berkeus, which is blue and not nude, the Oche Terhek that me, for for me, for do, at the Zolt, the Shenan Kapraday. I don't know about us, but do we have also the kind of spirit of capitalism, or the spirit of excellence, the spirit of industry, the spirit of development? Un ke di për ne, po a jemi o ne ata që e kemi ka shpirtin e kapitalizmet, shpirtin e shpirtimet, e të arritur e të shka në shkëqyshme. In fact, even, we would say integrity, democracy, I don't have time to discuss, but these are all the developments brought about by the reformation. Edhe së nuk ka më po për të sërdu me teje, me integritet, me demokracia, që të akto me dy të cjellura për mes reformacionit. But what I'm saying here is that the recognition that man is created in God's image, that man is able to experience the, the, uh, the release and freedom 
then that produced that kind of creativity, that productivity in the life of the people who experienced that release and freedom brought about by knowledge of the Word of God. Ditur e se kush jemi të kryojmë për e përëndisë, që përëndia të shirojmë që ne të kryojmë dhe shvillojmë që të ndikojmë dhe ata që i kemi njëtën tonë, është kjo aja është farë zotit të shirojmë. Say to the person beside you, your spirit of creativity and productivity needs to be shown. Edhe të pëtuaj, përsojmë një kafë të e që është kryma jo të kreative të vëtë regonë. Right? In fact, the word of God is so plain, he who does that word, let him not eat. Yeah, this is one of the good things that the reformers have discovered in their engagement with the Word of God. Let's go to the fourth prescription that we find here from Isaiah. And that is, in uh, verses 12 and 13, we need to rejoice in the triumph of God's grace. So we see here the triumph of the grace of God. Where you shall go out with joy and be led forth in peace. As you see the mountains are impossible, you, do you hear them clapping? Do you hear them singing? Or do you see that all of them are barren? Well, the triumph of God's grace, Apostle Paul describes that in Romans chapter 8, verse 20 to 23. Romans chapter 8, verse 20 to 23. He says that creation was subjected to futility. But he says that one day creation will be set free together with our redemption. See, after Adam and Eve fell into sin, even creation was cursed. Genesis chapter 3 says, because you have taken the forbidden fruit, cursed is the ground. Thorns and thistles will grow from it. And so creation was cursed. But creation is groaning and waiting for the time of redemption. When we are redeemed, that creation will also be set free. Like creation, we groan inwardly until we are transformed to have that glorious body. Because of sin, because of fall, we have our sicknesses, we have our arthritis, we have our diabetes, we have all our hypertension. But as the ground that was cursed will be transformed to be productive land, God's grace will also transform us. <laughs> One of the products of the Reformation is the rediscovery of the dignity of every human being. <laughs> Look at the person beside you. Do you see glory and honor in the light in the face of the person beside you? You say, I see dignity, I see honor in your face. Or you say, I am ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Well, I want to say that the Reformation brought us hope. 
Now, what is the difference between the four revolutions that have been that have been seen in this last 200 years? Atenția aș diferența în astea cei trei revoluții pe care au dat-o ca și vite de fund. 100 years ago there is the communist revolution in Russia. Para nici vie de că e revoluțiile comuniste în Rusia. And then earlier in this century we had the French Revolution. Asta e că e revoluțiile franceze. 200 years ago there is the American Revolution. Para nici vie de că e revoluțiile americane. And then 500 years ago there is a German Revolution. Para ca și vite de că e revoluțiile germane. Now what's the difference between all of these revolutions? Atenția aș diferența în astea trei revoluții. Well, I would say that communist and French revolution put their hope on men. Tu atenți cum revoluționarii comuniști ai francezi când au spus că nu trebuie să mergi. Comunism talks of having a classless society. Ei de comunism îți cere propuneri de societate patriarhală. But after 100 years, is there a classless society in Russia? O pasti și viața cu alte societăți patriarhale în Rusia. French Revolution, liberty, equality, fraternity. But that fraternity and egalitarian produce Napoleon Bonaparte, who is the dictator of France. Because it was a revolution that is centered on man's ability. Whereas American and German revolution began as spiritual revolutions. They focus more on revolution and change from within. Seeking how a person would have that dignity and have that right relationship with God. And that reformation brought optimism. Because they did not fight for power and for positions. But they fought for principles and truth. They believe that corrupt as well as cruel and poor nations can be reformed and can be transformed. And that faith in living God produces hope. And I would say that that is true also for Kosovo. That it is not the government that will bring transformation. It is not the United Nations that will bring transformation. It's the transformation from within that will bring that kind of hope. So I want to say here that the developments in Europe was brought by the engagement with the Word of God. So today, there is a call for us to have a new reformation. Let me end by three. Number one, we need to have that Bible engagement program. And the spot we need to it to keep me new new program. So now since at least it's been a million years. We want to have that personal meditation of God's word. That keep me new 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 core meditation of personal meditation. Every every person, every believer needs to have that engagement with the word of God. So the person is important to that keep that vision of God. In our churches, we need to have that intentional discipleship. Which is actually to the key, key to the growth of many churches around the world. One of the programs that we are uh, uh, sharing with World Evangelical Alliance is the Becoming a Disciple Maker program. So that every believer will have the ability to, equip, uh, to be equipped, to be prepared and equipped to help a other believer how to become a disciple. Că în cuptăți și sățile pe sunt doar pe paiți să ne pregăti după ei în sub chie, să se mai paiți chie la tine. We need, number two, a powerful proclamation of God's word. Numărul doi, ne chemi nevoie pe reprogramem fucie și un fiole spărădis. In our churches, we need to make sure that there is the biblical preaching of the world. Biblical preaching. We need to train our people to have the discipline of the right interpretation of the Word of God. As well as having the continuing education program. Then number three, we need to have the uh, promotion of biblical literacy. 
după asta e lucruri trebuie tot acei pe promovime e librele. We need to teach our people to know that the Bible is the final authority in all matters of faith and conduct. Acei pe promovime Biblia să tunci sub mijloc și Biblia așa autoritate e ce fac ocrave. And when they engage and when they know the Scripture, they will be able to overcome humanism as well as Secular so again, let's go back to the Bible. Sola Scriptura, Sola Gracia, Sola Fide and Sola Scriptus. Amen? O Sola Scriptus, Sola Gracia, Sola Scriptus and Sola Fide. Amen? The four ways we need to do that, we need to respond to God's gracious invitation. Come to Him while He may be found. Then we need to recognize the superior ways of God. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. And you see how development came out when the people began to think of God's thought rather than man's thought. We want to see the efficacy of the Word of God. That it brings the kind of economic development as well as emancipation, democracy and all other productive development then we want to see that triumph of God's grace. There is hope. There is transformation. There is a great future ahead of us. Let me ask you this person who wants who was to say, I want to change the world. But when he look at the world, the world is so big. In fact, he doesn't know all other countries in the world. I said, he said, I cannot change the world. And but I just got one point where he should vote. So I want to change my country. So you know, the other side of the world. But Kosovo is still so big. Kosovo is still so big. But 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 even the city is so big. Then I ought to change my family. But I do not have control over my family. So I decided I want to change myself. Can you do that? Can you change yourself? And what will change yourself? It is God's word that can change your life and my life. Amen. And because you change yourself, then you can influence your family, you can influence your city, you can influence your nation, and you can influence the world. Amen. Let's give a clap offering to the Lord. The word of God can change our lives. We have seen that in the lives of the reformers. We have seen that in the development of West of Western Europe. Of Western Europe. If, it, if it has happened then, it can also happen now. Let us engage with the Word of God. Let the Word of God transform our minds. Transform our hearts. Transform our values. Let us have hope brought about by the Word of God. And when the Word of God changes our lives, then we can change our world. Let us have a new reformation. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.